this will be a short final lecture for this quarter's course. I will briefly summarize what we have done in the past couple of lectures and um, give you a final theorem uh, that uh, collects all those results in a single statement. So let me quickly recall what we proved in the previous lecture. One of the main results that we proved is the following, that if I give you a field isomorphism theta and I give you a polynomial small f with coefficients inside capital F, and uh, I give you a splitting field E, a splitting field of this polynomial over the base field capital F, and I look at the copy of this polynomial over um, applying theta to it in F prime, and then look at a splitting field of this copy over F prime, then the set of a theta isomorphisms from E to E prime, and let me recall what is a theta isomorphism, but let me finish the sentence saying, saying that this set has at most the degree of this field extension number of elements. And let me quickly recall that by a theta isomorphism, we mean uh, a map, an isomorphism from E to E prime that makes this diagram commutative. So we have theta uh, in the bottom, and then we want to make this into a, a commutative diagram. In how many ways can I complete this diagram? That would be um, the left-hand side of this inequality, and we are giving an upper bound that it is at most the degree of this field extension. Moreover, if I if I am told that the irreducible factors of this polynomial f, if the irreducible factors of f do not have multiple zeros in E in its in the splitting field, then equality happens. Now, this brings us to one definition. First of all, it's better to um, give a definition instead of writing all irreducible factors of F to not have multiple zeros in E. We are going to say that this polynomial F in F bracket X is separable if this condition holds. If all irreducible factors of this polynomial in F bracket X do not have multiple zeros in their splitting fields. And notice that this definition does actually depend on the choice of capital F, because if I change F, if I make it larger, then the set of irreducible factors change. In particular, every polynomial is automatically separable, the way that we are defining it, is automatically separable in the splitting field over the splitting field of that polynomial. So this definition, it, it differs from book to book. I'm using this definition at this point. And um, now let's look at a special case of this theorem when f is f prime and theta is just the identity. In that case, instead of writing the set of theta isomorphisms, I can simply write down the set of f automorphisms of E. And then instead of saying that it's a splitting field of a polynomial, we know that I can replace it and say it's a finite normal extension so for a finite normal extension, the cardinality of the set of F isomorphisms of E cannot be more than the degree of this field extension. Now, uh, moreover, if I tell you it's a splitting field of, an, of a separable polynomial, again, again, the way that we define the separable polynomial, we did use separable polynomial in F bracket X, we did use that the cardinality of the automorphisms of E over F is precisely the degree of the field extension. Okay, so now this brings us to the definition of a separable field extension. We say uh, if uh, E is an algebraic extension of F, we say such an algebraic extension is a separable extension if for every alpha, the minimal polynomial of alpha over F is a separable polynomial. So if this is the case, then we call it 
a separable extension. Now um, we can put all together, we can put on several results that we proved together and get the following theorem. So suppose E is a finite field extension of uh, over F. And uh, I, then the following statements are equivalent. So the first condition says E is a normal separable extension of F. So everything is within E because I can explain if whether or not it's normal or whether or not it's separable only based on minimal polynomial on minimal polynomials of elements of E. Now we are going to make it very concrete. E is a splitting field of a separable polynomial. Now we are going to turn our attention to the symmetries of this field extension. The cardinality of the automorphisms of this field extension is precisely equal to the degree of this field extension. So again, we have this uh, three type of um, uh, three types. Uh, properties that we are using over here. So one is completely internal, the other one is very concrete, and the third one is about the symmetries of this field extension. Okay, so let's go from one to two, and we have seen the idea several times. Again, this is precisely the same idea that we've seen when we wanted to construct normal closure of a field extension. So uh, we are given a normal separable extension. We want to show it's a splitting field of a separable polynomial. So suppose I give you a um, basis, an F basis of E. We know that it's a finite extension. That's part of the assumption over here. That's part of the assumption. And uh, therefore, we do have a, such a basis. Uh, now we are going to look at the minimal polynomials of these uh, bases, elements of these bases over F. Because my extension is a normal extension, I can write down these minimal polynomials as product of degree one factors. So I can find gamma sub ij's inside this field extension and write down these minimal polynomials as product of these degree one factors. Now I'm going to look at I'm going to look at the product of all these minimal polynomials and get a polynomial f. Now what we notice is that because gamma sub i's are already inside E and they are zeros of this minimal polynomial, this means that these gamma i's are among these gamma sub i j's. So it's either gamma sub i1, gamma sub i2, and so on, till gamma sub i, uh, I think I use this notation, n sub i. Okay, so but it is, okay, let me make it correct. So it is definitely one of these, therefore, when I look at uh, the field E, it definitely contains the field generated by F and these gamma sub ij's, these zeros, but this contains the F span of gamma sub one, gamma sub two, gamma sub three, and so on, because these gamma sub i's appear among these double digited gamma i's. And of course, the F linear expan expansion of them would be a subset of the ring generated by F and these gamma sub ij's, but gamma sub 1 that gamma sub m form an f basis, therefore their f span is the entire field E. So altogether, we get that all things, all of these are equal, which means after adding these zeros gamma sub ij's to f, I get the entire E. So that means E is a splitting field of the polynomial f over the capital F. Now notice, the irreducible factors of the polynomial f are these minimal polynomials. And because E is a separable extension of f, by definition, all these irreducible factors, all these minimal polynomials, none of them, all of them do not have multiple zeros in the splitting field. And therefore, that means the polynomial f is separable.
So we ended up showing that E is a splitting field of this separable polynomial F. That's exactly what we wanted to show. Now, if I tell you that E is a splitting field of a separable polynomial, then by a result that we have proved over here, when E is a splitting field of a separable polynomial over F, then the cardinality of the group of automorphisms of this extension, field extension, is precisely the degree of the field extension. And that's exactly what we wanted to show. So 2 implies 3. So 2 implies 3 is what we had already proved. OK, so there is nothing to prove there. Now let's finish it off by showing that 3 implies 1. Oh, how do we do it? So we use the same idea as within the proof of uh, the previous step or the previous theorem that we proved in the previous lecture. So what is it? Let, let me quickly recall. I give you an alpha inside E. I have to tell you that the minimal polynomial of alpha over F can be written as a product of degree one factors and it does not have multiple zeros. So this is what I need to show. Okay, so how do I do it? I start with looking at the cardinality of the automorphisms of E as uh, F, F automorphisms of E. I mean, that's my assumption. That's the only assumption that they have. I know that this cardinality is equal to the degree of the field extension. So I'm going to start with this cardinality. Given theta in this, uh, given theta hat in this group of automorphisms, I am going to restrict it to uh, F bracket alpha. I want to understand where this guy goes. Okay, but for now, I just assume I fix such, uh, such a restriction. I assume that I know what the restriction of theta hat to F bracket alpha is. Then I ask myself, in how many ways can I extend it to the entire uh, E. So again, I have this kind of uh, tower in mind. I have E, I have E, I have F in the bottom, I have F in the bottom, here is identity. And then I have F bracket alpha as my intermediate field. Then we want to understand in how many ways I can make this a complete mm, commutative diagram but I, I go one block at a time. I say, okay, so, so let's say I give you a theta over here. I have to understand in how many ways I can put a theta. And then I look at uh, the f of theta of alpha. And I ask myself, how many ways now can I extend this? Okay, so this means I'm asking myself, after fixing theta, I'm asking myself, in how many ways can I extend this picture? This Can I make the, the top part of this commutative diagram, the, the, the top part of the commutative diagram? In how many ways can I do it after fixing the theta? But this is precisely what we have proved in the previous lecture that the, the number of days that we can do cannot be more than the degree of the field extension. So I go back here, I deduced by the result that the degree of this field extension would be an upper bound on the number of ways that I can actually extend theta to an isomorphism from E to E. So I get this upper bound the degree of this field extension as an upper bound for each one of these terms. And then I have to say how many terms I have. And the number of terms that I have is exactly the number of ways that I can embed the field F bracket alpha into E. So every theta gives me an F embedding of F bracket alpha to into E. Then after fixing the theta, I ask, as I ask myself how many ways can I extend it and so on. So I get this upper bound for the cardinality of the F automorphisms of E. So this part, we have no idea. So we, we, we put it over there. We don't touch it. But in how many ways can I embed F bracket alpha into E using F linear maps? So again, this part, we have no control. I mean, we, it's, we are supposed to use identity on this part. So it's all about alpha. But alpha is supposed to be mapped 
to a zero of the minimal polynomial of alpha. And moreover, using the isomorphism theorem that we had, whenever I give you two zeros of the minimal polynomial, I can always find an f isomorphism from f bracket alpha to f bracket alpha prime. And that gives me an F embedding. So the number of F embeddings from F bracket alpha to E is precisely the number of distinct zeros of the minimal polynomial of alpha over F in this target field E. Okay, so now this part is equality. So the number of F embeddings of F bracket alpha into every field that I give you, every field extension of F, is precisely the number of distinct zeros of the minimal polynomial of alpha over f in the target field. That's a general fact, and we used it here. Now, we go back to our hypothesis. The hypothesis tells me that the cardinality of the group of automorphisms, f automorphisms of E, is precisely the degree of this field extension. Now, I'm going to use the tower rule. The tower rule tells me, the tower rule tells me that the degree of this field extension equals to the degree of the intermediate field extension times this. Now, this part cancels out this part, and we end up getting the following. Um, okay, so we get this inequality at the moment, and I will justify equality. We get that the number of zeros, distinct zeros of the minimal polynomial of alpha in E cannot be less than the degree of this field extension of bracket alpha over F, but that is precisely the degree of the minimal polynomial. So that means the equality should hold, and moreover, we get that, um, we get that M, the minimal polynomial of alpha over F, has degree of this polynomial distinct zeros in E. So this gives me two consequences. First of all, I can decompose completely the minimal polynomial over E. I can write it as product of linear factors in E bracket X. Second, it does not have multiple zeros in E because all of them are supposed to be distinct, as we have mentioned over here. So it does not have multiple zeros in its splitting field. The first one tells me that E is a normal extension of F, and the second one tells me that it's a separable extension of F. And that's exactly what we wanted to show. An algebraic extension E of F is called a Galois extension if it is both normal and separable. And we will explore properties of Galois extensions in the next course. For now, I hope that you enjoyed this course and learned many things about uh, algebra, rings, and solutions of polynomials.